Welcome everyone again. Um, this is Ana Beatriz Guerreiro Lopes. She is a Debian developer um, <laughs> since 2005. She is also a DevConf organizer and she works in the KDE package team. She's going to present this buff about integrating new people in package teams. Please uh, welcome her. Okay, good morning. Thank you to all those people who, who made sure I was waking up today early. Something very complicated to me. So actually in some moment I have to put a title, uh, a nice title to, to this. This is a book, not at all, even if we are in this room. So I decided to put this title, but actually what I wanted to put was this one, okay? When you are maintaining a lot of packages in some moment, what you want is somebody else helping you out doing your job, and if this person is doing your, your job exactly as you want, it's even better. So I have a bunch of slides, well, a bunch, 10 of them, because it was very early, and I didn't know how much awake people was going to be. So I am covering a bit some, some of the typical stuff that people do. Is, oh, it's better now? Some of the stuff that people usually do for when they have a team and want new people joining. But I am sure you have a, a lot of ideas there, so if in any case you have something to say, please raise your hand. Because the objective of here is getting a new ideas. So we have a lot of uh, very, very big, uh, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, set of packages in the archive, for example, KDE, PHP, X, Tex, that I usually maintain by a group of people. In the past, in some cases, were only one single people. It was a big problem sometimes. And all, I mean, absolutely all, all these things need help. In some cases, the maintainer never will say he or she needs help, but they always need help. Um, what happens when you get new people, you want to, you want these people automatically be working and be helping you. That's impossible. You need to, to do something for these people helping because they are knowing never to know automatically how they can help you. You probably know that URL that's in, in the last line. There is a bunch of things. Uh, some of the things are infrastructure team, organizational teams uh, that doesn't have nothing to do with this tool, but I am sure that you know what I mean. So I have been working a lot of years in the in the KD team, and it's very very normal. We we have people uh, joining us, saying, "Oh, I want to help." Um, yeah, we usually never know what to do with them. We want them to help, but we don't know what to do with them. Also, some of the ideas here, tangentially, it's not the objective here, can help your your team working better, because I mean, working in a team with all new people is very very hard. A team more than two people is already very difficult to coordinate sometimes. And it's also out of that, but if somebody has some idea about this, it would be very welcome. We have, if you have some mailing list with users about the software you are using, you will realize that you have a lot of power users, users that are helping a lot to other users, but they never join the, the development team. It will be something very interesting to know how, how to trick them into doing that. Well, this is not really interesting. I mean, I think everybody knows how to see a potential new contributor when they appear. I get a lot of emails saying, oh, I want to help you in KDE, what I should do. I don't know if it's the case. There's somebody else, I don't know, Julian, did you get an email saying, oh, I want to help in X? Never, 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 never? So, hi. Uh, so I'm Julien Christo, I'm working on the uh, X packages. Um, so, mostly that happened after we sent some requests for help on DDA or on Planet or whatever, and we got two or three people saying, hey, uh, I, I could help, and usually we, re we reply to that thing, okay, giving a, a few pointers and stop there. <laughs> yeah, something normal. So basically the first brilliant idea you can have here is use, I say, okay, I will write some documentation, I put everything there. 
people will read that and they will help me. That doesn't work. I mean, you have here the typical season wines. Uh, the, well, how, the, how your thing is working changes a lot. So what happens is in, you never write everything down. Reading it is very boring. You never maintain it to date. And it doesn't matter what you do, people don't read that. So they ask you very stupid questions that is exactly in the first page you have. So in some moment, I realized that writing some stuff is a good idea, but it's, it's not really the solution. Also, uh, in the key meeting, we organize some kind of book day for getting people into closing our bags. Uh, Sune Borella made one like maybe four or five months ago. We have maybe two or three people helping. They close a lot of bags, but after, after that day, people disappear. It was nice because we have some graphs with the bags. So one week later, you can see the um, uh, the graph going down, but uh, people individually didn't feel like they helped a lot. Another idea, this is what mostly have worked for, for me, has been getting people into IRC, um, asking, they ask questions, sometimes very stupid questions, but since it's not something very public, they feel like asking and you answer. Uh, still, the, it's, not very, it's not perfect. Sometimes uh, you are in Europe and you are talking with somebody from Australia, so the time difference is very huge. You don't have so many time for thinking. So sometimes when you say something in English, it doesn't make too much sense. Or what people tell you, you don't understand it. And still, there is some people who doesn't really get IRC. They enter to IRC, they say hello. Uh, sometime after they say goodbye, but they never participate. Maybe they are waiting you to ask or something, I don't know. But when some people who, who really want to help and know more or less how Debian works join the, the IRC channel, it usually works very well. Another minor idea, I am sure mm, uh, a lot of, of you have done something like this in the past, having, having very easy packages. For example, you have very easy X modular. In our case, we have some of the uh, small key dependencies. We say, oh, does somebody want to help with this? Sometimes uh, people help. And after that, jump to the key core packages. Um, sometimes they start updating it and they never finish. I do everything. I also have blocked a lot of time asking for help. I have to say that maybe of four or five posts saying, oh, we need help, we need help. In one of those posts, one person come and has been for like three or four months dragging books, something that was very, very nice. I mean, maybe he has closed something like 200, 300 or something like that. I already have, has lost the number. And also something that other people have been doing has been like putting easy tasks, hard tasks, difficult tasks in some wiki page or in the, in the backtracking system. Um, and say, oh, look at the easy task and do one of them, and then with that you get, you get to join the team. Um, I really have never seen that working in, for me in Debian. Yeah. Maybe for other projects is uh, an entry point. Also, I try blogging with, with very specific tasks. I am that, sorry. Um, didn't really work for me very well. Most of the people say, okay, I'm going to help with this. How exactly I do? Um, I am asking the people to try to figure it out. out. Um, maybe I didn't really know how to spread that very well. I mean, I, you have to do this yourself, and it didn't work. So I have a, a set of lists that, a set of, of things that is basically what I see is frustrating the most the people. Because all when people want to help, it's really, really complicated to know uh, in what they are able to help. It's very complicated. Sometimes they want to help in something that your team doesn't work. For example, I am sure more you have, have gotten somebody who wanted to help doing something like coding. Um, you don't really code. You can make patches, but you don't code. Also, sometimes people is trying to help, but they only want to fix their, fi their pet problem. They don't care about anything else. And they want to fix it in a way that is no, not exactly the, the best one. And this happened a lot in book report discussion. Um, 
I also was saying before that I try to assign very easy tasks to people to see if they, with that they kind of say, oh, I know how to help, I am going to continue helping. In most of the cases, they have been taking, I don't know, one week, two weeks, and after that, you need that task done, so you have to do it. And also everybody thinks that, uh, well, everybody know a lot of people think that helping is only packaging. You don't do bug reports, you don't write any minimal documentation, you don't help users in mailing lists, you don't coordinate with people. I don't know, have any of you have something else to, to add here that has frustrating here or here a lot? So the following slide I have is the, maybe what this talk is about, is the more common frustration I have seen in people joining the team. Basically the first, first one is usually in Debian we are very, 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 very slow and it takes a lot of time until the people see in the archive what was the result of their job. They were some, uh, they, they fix a bug uh, or they help somebody else, this person never say thank you, um, so you don't really know if you help or not. Uh, it takes, I think, a lot of time realizing that when you are doing something in Debian, nobody is going to say you thank you. From time to time, you get an email, but it's something very strange. Not all the tasks are rewarding. If you are not doing that for fun, you are not going nowhere. It also takes a lot of time understanding them, time. Most of the people feel very insecure because in Debian we had a very bad fame. So people think, oh, if I do something wrong, everybody is going to, to send an email, an email to some list and they are going to see, say very bad things about me. I have a lot of people who, who were very smart asking me almost every step, oh, should I do this, should I do this, should I do this, should I do this? After two days, it become very, very annoying. Um, maybe the most important thing <laughs> is that the people don't understand that they will never know absolutely everything. Some people think they know everything, but obviously they are wrong. Um, they say, no, no, I will, I will do that when I understand it, this and this and this and this completely. And sometimes you cannot get the global map, I mean, of everything in Debian that your package is going to, is going to affect. So, sure. So, um, as a newcomer, I can maybe add some points to the list. First of all, quite often the maintainer doesn't exist. So you mail the maintainer, you file a bug report, you take the time to write a patch, and you don't get an answer for months, sometimes years. So th this is, I think, one of the more, for the people who took the time already to look how you properly contribute is the higher source of frustration. So seeing that the maintainer is not there. And one thing, the other no, thing is no that- I, I comment you on this thing ah. and then you tell me another thing. What you should do in this is writing the MIA team. Okay, you go to the QA pages, you can see the email. What happens? The MIA team, I have to say that sometimes it's also MIA. Yeah, yeah it, it happened a lot through the years. I mean, you have a lot of people reading the alias. It's something like, I don't know, 10, 11 people. And usually nobody answers you. So I know it's even more frustrating. So in some cases you can be lucky and somebody answers you. There is some people who is, very, very clearly Mia. But maybe somebody from the Mia team writes them or you write them and these people tell you, no, I will take care of my packages in two, in two, in two weeks when I finish something. And two weeks is two months and two years. Um, you keep waiting, waiting, waiting. And obviously you cannot go and, and hire the packages. Some people do that, but you can't. So what I think is the best thing you can do in these cases is opening a bag and asking, hey, are you, I mean, after writing the person and so on, hey, are you still maintaining the packaging? I mean, like, I don't know, um, which list bugs are in the packaging? Are you still interested in the packaging? Uh, I see you are not maintaining it. You also can do this asking for packaging new version, when is the case. This person will tell you, oh, I will take care, care of that. Sometimes they close the bag. But after two months, if the person has not read, you can reopen the bag and pin them again. I think that when there is like some kind of public track of, I don't know, six months, seven months, nine months, one year, and this person has no, has no answer, you can ping strongly in the Debian QA mailing list or even asking in, in Debian Devil, and somebody, if you are not a Debian developer, might help you to, 
to kind of steal the packaging, but this time it's like there is a public trust record that you have been maintaining, uh, have been contacting this person. So I don't know if this works for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I never did, did it, but I, I know there is a process that one can start. But and the other thing is that um, when you want to document yourself, to find documentation, how you can actually help, then typically after you get an answer, well, this is described in the wiki. Okay, which wiki? Where is it? What act where actually should I have to look? You know, it's and it's every package has a different way of documenting the workflow. Some packages don't have a documentation. Some have good documentation. Some have documentation. There's some blocks that they, I mean, for the newcomer that doesn't know anything, you know, it's difficult to understand how you can help without asking. When you ask, you get replies that are typically from pissed off people that always have to say the same thing. So it is really a kind of a, from one side, a social communication problem. From the other side is that the Debian website is in the state that we know. So it's difficult to, un to find documentation. And when you find it, you get, well, this is described in the Debian policy. So how many pages is the Debian policy? So just, I mean, I know that the problems don't have an easy solution. It's just that I wanted to ha add some points to this budget list because I don't think that most of the newcomers, I mean, it may be that most of the newcomers are excited about something and then disappear after a day. But f if even only 1% of these people would then manage to get proper tutoring and help, they would stay afterwards. So and would be already enough. Okay, so please, the people who wants to speak, raise your hand. I will write down who wants to talk. Okay, so Christian Lederras, uh, Ruth, and you. Yeah, uh, Christian Perrier speaking. Uh, I think the late, latest comments seem to show that things don't just don't happen magically. People are not helped by magic or by documentation. We need to invest time in that. Uh, mm -hmm. So everybody, I think this is more or less what you meant, Anna. Uh, if we don't invest time in our teams to mentor newcomers, to help them, to answer them, to guide them through the documents, then we will fail. Well, I have a v successful ex experience over the years with the DI localization people. There are you most often people who know nothing about Debian, they just come and want to help, the exact example. And I had to invest a lot of time doing that. But if you invest this time, I think it becomes successful. It needs some documentation, maybe sometimes inaccurate documentation, just to have people ask questions and then interact again and again. The key is investing time. I, I don't see any other magic solution. Uh, Russ Alberry. Um, a couple of points. Uh, first, on the the MIA um, part, um, one of the things is that I think that um, people find starting the MIA process and going through that to feel very confrontational. Um, they're they're telling somebody that they're not doing their job properly, um, and what that means is, in in particular, I think that most newcomers to Debian are just not going to be willing to do that. They don't feel secure enough to go tell somebody that they're not doing their job, or even start a process really that does that. Um, so, to me, I think that's one of the places where those of us who are Debian developers who have been around for a while, who feel a little bit more comfortable saying, "Hey, look, you know, you're not maintaining your package." We really need to step in and help when it's an MIA situation. We need to be the ones who go do that process because the newcomers are just not going to be in a place where they can do that. Um, the the other thing was about the documentation parts. Um, Debian slash readme.source. If you if you're part of a packaging team or you maintain a package and you want other people to help, each time somebody asks you a question about how you maintain that package and that, that you don't know that it's already written down somewhere, put it in Debian in Debian slash readme.source. We've got a fairly standard location now to put that kind of stuff, and it's, then it's in the source package, which means that anyone who's looking at the source package will see it. Um, and so they, you know, if, even if it's just pointers to your wiki or whatever, that way there's something that's a standard location everywhere, and it, they can look at it offline, and it's in the actual package, so it's in the one thing you know they have if they're working on the package. Okay, I just want to say something about the... Um, 
about people joining the new maintainer process or Debian developer new maintainer process. I don't know how it's going to be called in one year. Uh, usually people who have been working in teams, you usually know two 3Ds who are working with you. So getting advocate is in some moments somebody gets very tired of sponsoring you. And you can say, hey, you have been working with us for one, two, three years. Uh, and look, you are doing the same than us. And I have to look at your packages. Please apply. I have a case of somebody has been working, I don't know, four years or something like that. And I have to say, he may be listening, Modestas, please apply. I mean, maybe you know him, Modestas Vainius, and I was like, please apply already because I want to go, you are doing all the job, and this time I only unload in the packages. So you are building them anyway, please apply. So in some cases, you even have to beg people. I mean, please. It's just uh, when people get trust on their servers, um, it's easy. Um, I don't really see. Maybe people who is maintaining only two, one packages, they, they feel very insecure. But I think that the team factor here works a lot. OK. Uh, my name is Ben Armstrong. Um, speaking as a team leader to you know, newcomers like you, um, I understand your frustration when you are directed to the wiki or to, to policy. Um, but you know, if there are shortcomings there, you can help to fill that out. You will learn things as you ask more questions, and you can then contribute to the wiki and maybe aim more at the newcomer, because I have not paid attention so much in, say, the Debian EPC wiki. There's a ni the team's template says, here are tasks that newcomers can do. And when I initially filled out that, that page, I put some things that I thought were things that newcomers could do. But I find we're not consulting it, we're not updating it as new people come and say, hey, can I do something? And so that's one area that we can work together. Um, the other thing is um, perhaps I don't notice you unless you show up on IRC. Um, I'm very generous with my time on IRC. and. Um, uh, I know uh, a lot of teams are like this, that, you know, sitting down and writing the, do the doc and the wiki um, is, uh, you need to discipline yourself to do that a little bit more. Uh, so, but I, I just mentioned that because you said this is something that works well for you. Uh, for a, from a team leader's perspective, though, that's a very expensive use of your time to be individually covering the same ground over and over and over again, where uh, there's a lot of risk as well involved in uh, most of these people aren't going to pan out as as contributors, so just kind of encourage other team leaders to put more effort into that that team page where you say here are, are the tasks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have some comment about the frustration you have when you're joining on frustration you have now? Uh, um, my name is Gregor Hermann. I'm in the Debian Pearl Group. And I'd like to add a comment about documentation. I totally agree with you that it's useless to tell someone, well, go to the wiki. It's more or less saying, fuck off. Um, but I think it, it is useful and it helps if you point people to a, to a specific page, if you give them a URL or if you say go to this page and then read section something. So I don't want to repeat everything again and again on the IRC if it is written down, but I try to point it out very specifically. And this I also think because you, Anna, Anna you said uh, doc writing documentation is not so helpful from a team point of view. I think it is helpful because it saves me from uh, explaining the same stuff all over and over again. That's what I mean. We write so minimal documentation for the things you usually ask. But in some moments, you cannot cover there everything. I mean. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, does somebody have something, uh, any question or any suggestion more? Because if not, I have some questions for you. So uh, this is a general question, but maybe from all the, all the questions here, I have maybe two that are the most important to me, that if any of you have uh, entering in Debian, working inside a team directly instead of, uh, right now a lot of people is maintaining single, single packages, but I have seen in the latest time a lot of people who don't start maintaining single packages. In some moment, they start helping in a thing. So if there is somebody here who has started contributing to Debian doing that, okay. 
Then a uh, following question. Uh, you don't have to tell me the experience, but uh, have any of you been scared of working in a thing or working or looking how the thing works and saying, okay, I won't work with them? You? Uh, do you want to tell why? We are saying the thing, you don't have to. <laughs> When I when I start when I start working with the security team, it was really hard. I mean, yeah, it, there is no even documentation. The documentation is in the head of the people. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, I was scared. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, if any of you want have some answer to one of these questions uh, or want to share the experience, it's not the moment. If not, I will move on. Can you ah, sorry. Um, related to if you started contributing in Debian, what did help you? Personally, for me, um, starting in Debian Science, Debian Med, that there was sufficient amount of information available in non-IRC communication channels. So they had a mailing list and you could get a sense of how people communicate, what is style, what you need to, uh, what, what are the standards you need to get to, to be able to uh, do substantial contributions. And maybe it's just me, but IRC is you know, too liquid. There's some, sometimes there's information there, sometimes not, depends on the time zone you're in. And and you know it's it's I know for 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 people coming into it, email is probably you know way more standard than, than IRC, unless you first become a hacker and then go to Debian. That's that's different story. But I think you know there there, there are more people that you know can contribute than are already hackers of some sort or quality. Yeah, I have to agree that um, IRC can't be the only way. Um, I still find it a very effective way, but maybe we're not using it as effectively. Um, being sensitive to other people's schedules, maybe we could focus more on scheduled meetings. Just a thought. Just quick addition for me, when I entered Devin, I entered with dedicated sponsor for myself. Sponsor, mentor, actually, sponsor. So he was sponsoring my packages. There were no notion of mentorship at that time, I believe. But there was a dedicated person who gave me hints on where I was wrong. And it, it, it just, first of all, made my contributions readily available soon within the system I want to contribute to. Right? So I started working, he was sponsoring packages, and I saw the result right there quite soon. So and. Now we have all the mechanisms for sponsorship and mentor mentoring, but it takes time till you find your mentor or someone who or, uh, who wants to work with you. So maybe this advice to kind of actually it's present there. It's just what helped me. Well, uh, traditionally, like maybe f six, seven years old, what was very typical is you start maintaining a packaging. And we have some kind, kind of mentoring one-to-one. -one. And it was mostly private emails. You f people feel more like secure in the sense it was usually no public communication. So you have somebody who was helping you. Uh, you mailing a very stupid question, and this person answered you the question, and so on. Nowadays, uh, that is still working for some people. But in some cases, uh, in the area you are helping, you are not working only with one person. On this person, is very overworked. So it's better if you can kind of join more people, I mean, having more, more than one mentor. So in this case, what happens? You could do the communication only via, via mailing and so on, but we have more communication channels. And in the case of IRC, people is talking about, about the time difference that sometimes you don't have time to help. But sometimes you more or less have time to help and somebody's doing something and, they want, and he, this person wants the answer in that moment. And helping that person in that moment can mean that this person is doing something that day, gets encouraged, and keep doing stuff. 
Sometimes if you send an email and you get the answer like, I don't know, two weeks after, two weeks after you are no longer interested in doing that. In any case, I have a question. Uh, from all these people here, uh, and is we working in a team, how many of you are usually using IRC for communicating? Okay, most of you. And how many of you do your Debian work with no IRC at all? Wow, I mean, I'm really surprised that there is Debian people who can do Debian, uh, Debian job with IRC. We could use IRC, but we don't because we feel that it's superficial to somewhat or non-efficient for us. And in, a, in addition to that, um, getting into the Debian world, one of the most precious advice that I got too late was that it's very critical to leave a public trace. Because at some point, somebody is going to ask you, what did you do? And if you don't, if you can't come up with references, and you're not working on one of the popular targets, right, with 2,000 bug reports open, then it's very difficult first to find a mentor, and then to to get people to agree that you're doing something that is, you know, at least remotely valuable to to the project. And IRC doesn't give you that unless you hang out a lot of time there, in which you probably can be very productive to to do your work. And email will give you public references and that you can rely on later on. And also, you know, in terms of, th that's in my own opinion, where this whole evaluation of people who will eventually become uh, project members, which I am not, right, um, should move more towards evaluation of public references than of a sidetrack of, you know, exams that you take and, and assess your uh, reputation and capabilities at the time of doing the examination, right? And it should be more of a you know ongoing evaluation. It's pretty much like a, a large scale uh, missing in action process. Anybody can go missing in action at any point, right? And they 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 get out of touch with evol you know, evolution of, of of Debian standards. If you became Debian developer ten years ago and you have one package, there is there's qu it's quite likely that you have no clue what the Debian policy says today. Okay, I, I, I don't really think there needs to be uh, this kind of perceived conflict between the IRC and non-IRC way of doing things. Any effective project uh, leader understands that there are going to be some IRC members and some non-IRC members and will work happily with both. Um, f for me personally, as a, a hardcore <laughs> IRC addict, um, this is a way that uh, I can take my energy and my enthusiasm and keep that level high because I thrive on the interactions, the minute-by-minute -minute interactions. And if I didn't do that, I'd die. Um, I would no longer be useful to the Debian project. But I also realize there's mailing lists, and I also realize there's the wiki, and uh, I think I make very effective use of both of those in my project. So I wouldn't, if you were approaching my project, and the only way you were communicating was non-IRC, Do you, do you think that publishing IRC log publicly would help um, for the history, in, for instance? Uh, I want to answer something that you said about uh, communication of about mailing lists versus IRC, but I want to make a comment about publishing IRC logs. And I think that most of the Debian channel have the analoging policy in the, in the sense that you can make logs for yourself, but you cannot publish the log. Usually in the IRC laws, you tend to put some stuff that shouldn't be public. So I don't know who. Th I mean, there is somebody here that thinks that, for example, making the logs of Debian Devil public will be useful. Not all. But there is somebody here that I don't know. Maybe uh, supposedly a Debian PHP channel. Do you think that the logs of that channel will be useful? Not really. So I don't. Yeah, any. Yes. Okay, um, people who are on IRC do check their backlogs, and people who are not connected uh, can't check their backlog. And basically, I don't use IRC that much, 
but I have a, a screen plus I SSI. Just wanting all the time to have access to the logs, and that's um, a waste of resource for uh, OFTC and free nodes. Uh, I also do what he does. I am a lot of channels. I don't really participate just because, for example, I am the VM devil because when there, when there is a problem, you are, I mean, there is a machine not working for you, you go to the VM devil and probably somebody already has complained about that. So you know what the problem and why is this problem being there. But uh, I have found out that sometimes uh, about publishing that information, um, it's not really useful because maybe in 5th of July, it makes sense if I am talking with somebody about coordinating the packaging, the, the beta of some packaging that is coming out in, in August. But in September, that information is no longer useful. So. And about uh, IRC based mailing links, mailing list is not only that you can get an uh, immediate answer sometimes and even you can ask for more details and answer more properly. It's also that uh, I see a lot of people who is sending questions to mailing lists. I was going to say silly question, but maybe they are not silly. It's just that sending sometimes a uh, a question to the Vian Devil that is going to be for, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 people, saying, for example, I have this not working. I mean, oh, this matching is not working for me. Uh, you are wasting the time of a lot of people when you can enter to IRC and you will sit on the Vian Devil topic. So maybe you don't, you don't lose your time, but you make a lot of more people losing time. When we have a FTP master done for maybe one week, uh, it was sent an email to some, some of the announced mailing list, I don't remember what one. <laughs> and several days after, somebody was asking in Debian Devil, in Debian Devil mailing list. So maybe this is not the best example because you are supposed to be subscribed to the communication mailing list, but it's also that happens a lot in, in smaller things. Uh, in the very well, you're supposed to be subscribed to Debian. Um, what is announced or yeah, develop announce announced if you're a developer? No, in the very moment you are maintaining a package, you should be subscribed there. Right, but we're talking about the people who should be maintaining a package, right? That you want to get into the project and you assume a lot of knowledge about Debian internal things which are not at all transparent and not at all, you know, obvious from the from the first side. So and, and that, you know, it, it imposes an you know a, an anticipation of culture in Debian which is not visible from outside personal experience. Well, given how Debian Devil works, I think that in the very moment you are interested in development, you should be subscribed, so. Oh, I'm subscribed to a lot of de mailing lists, and uh, I read them a lot, that's why I know how it works, but you want people to subscribe. You have to subscribe yeah, I read them for years now, but, and, and that gives a very clear impression, but the, you want people to get to the point. And usually what, y what, you, what you learn is, at the, uh, the first side, Debian Devel has lots of things going on. If you're interested in the social you know, aspects of the project, you'll, you'll learn a lot. And th that makes it interesting if you have the time to do so. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ashish. Sorry I had to step out for a bit in the middle. Um, but as far as things that new contributors don't know, is uh, who else feels like they're in the beginning part of their Debian career and is not a DM or a DD yet in this room. Uh, so, uh, can you guys? Can we maybe talk afterwards about like we can? Can we sit down and if you guys show me, here's what I read. Here's why it made no sense to me because that's a perspective that we experienced contributors don't have anymore. And I think that'll also begin to address some of the confusing aspects of team stuff too, although only tangentially. Do you see what I mean? Really follow you, oh, well, so there's a concept called usability studies where you ask people to, uh, to, you know, if I've made a system, I'll have a user sit down and try a task and I'll say, uh, narrate to me what you're thinking as you try to achieve this task. And uh, I think that new people have a lot to show us about what is unusable on the Debian website for helping them find out what they should do. And I think that if if some, if we can smooth out some of that stuff, then it'll help people who are new to teams find the right answer to their problems and the right way to do things. Also, I don't really. I mean, 
I understand your ideas, but I don't really see it very well, so. <laughs> Sorry, no. Okay, and then I am going to to ask a question that has nothing to do with the vote, but you are not talking, and I'm very curious. Uh, okay, 15 minutes. Um, uh, do you think that there is some Debian working, some Debian thing that is totally, totally, totally failing to to attract new contributors, but they are trading it very hard? <laughs> I was talking about packaging. Yeah, and then my following question is, I have been working only about um, uh, packaging things, but do you think that there is something, I haven't thought about that, there is something that is, uh, you have been working in some packaging, uh, in something that was no packaging thing, and you have some idea that might be applicable here? After that, I don't have really have any more questions, so thank you for coming. Wants to say something? This is uh, somewhat of a different topic. I was kind of wanted to mention towards the end. Um, so, um, one project that might be really interesting to look at along lines of how do you include new people um, is DreamWidth. Uh, so, they're they're a uh, it's an implementation of LiveJournal runs on free software, um, and they they're and it's actively developing the LiveJournal software suite. Uh, it's interesting for a few different reasons, and the one that's gotten the most press recently is the fact that it's uh, that 60 percent of the contributors to DreamWith are female, and it's one of only two projects that, that people are generally aware of where the majority of contributors are female. But um, more interestingly, I think for this particular talk, it is also has a huge number of contributors where they have never done any software development before ever, um, and it. They, they, the project puts a lot of effort into trying to get what they call baby devs to come write Perl code. And it's live journal. It's not particularly great Perl code. It's complicated. And they managed to have a lot of success with that. So the couple points I was going to make, one of them is take a look. Uh, they're really an interesting project. And they've developed a whole pile of suggestions as to how you do this sort of thing. But the other thing I was going to mention is I think that the biggest thing that they do, um, which has been helpful, and is just that, and it goes back to what Christian was saying, was that um, it takes a lot of time, and they put a lot of time into it. And the leaders of the DreamWith project basically treat it as as important or more important than writing code themselves is to teach other people how to do it and to get other people involved. So it, and it's a hard thing to say because I, mean, I, I think all of us probably, <laughs> for the most part, enjoy working on our own stuff more than we enjoy trying to mentor other people. Um, it, because it can be draining emotionally to mentor other people, particularly if you're kind of introverted. I am. I think a lot of people who work on this kind of stuff are. Um, but I think that that's one of the things that we can learn from them is that if you put a lot of effort into it, it really does pay off. And if you can create a really supportive environment, I mean, they are, for their, for when they train new developers, they are really, really strong on trying to keep the tone constructive and supportive and to try to really not jump on people and to try to let people make mistakes and spend a lot of time talking about that as a community um, because you know, their experience is that a lot of people would like to help and a lot, but a lot of people are scared and a lot of people are just really uncomfortable and it's way outside of their comfort zone and it's, it's like leaping off of buildings or you know, parachuting for the first time of an airplane. You know, and they need a lot of support and encouragement along the way. But it pays off if you do it and you get a lot of new developers. And they get developers like I no other project I've ever seen. And just, whoa, uh, one other thing that DreamWidth does is they have a bunch of VMs that they can provision for new developers to hack on the code. So uh, in order to modify a complex mod Perl based Apache deployment, instead of having to set it up on their own machines, they just get a virtual machine provisioned for them by the product leaders. So I wonder, uh, and that's sort of the, one of the things about that you talked about is this frustration where you label new th easy things to do, and I've had this myself in my own projects, you label easy things to do, nobody does them, and you're like, well, actually, I needed that. And then you do it yourself. Um, so there's, um, there's this process by which the easy things get dried up. And the cool thing about the VM is that you can just tell people to, you can give people specific tasks inside their playground that doesn't affect the real package, but teaches them the same skills. And also, setting up a pbuilder to root 
is scary, although not actually hard, and like a bunch of other things. Um, I'd like to, s to take a step back here. Um, different people have different levels of commitment to Debian and different amount of time to spend on Debian. So trying to get people to become core developers isn't, isn't necessarily going to work. Um, so one of the ideas that I had for the Debian games team to get some people, more people involved is on the wiki.debian.org slash games slash parties. Um, the first party that I was planning to do but I still need to write a bunch of code for is a screenshots party, right? And the main point of the, these parties is to publicise the team, get people to know that the team exists and that you can contribute by having just the skills to make a screenshot, for example. Um, and then you can move on to more advanced things like bug squashing parties or bug filing parties or um, whatever else you can think of. So th this is just one idea I've had but haven't been able to implement yet. Um, yeah, Please use it in other teams. So you ask the question if you have been scared away of starting to work in a team. So I don't know it now if it is, is of general interest. I can report my experience with the Python module team. And uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, aware of the situation of Python in Debian and uh, famous, okay. okay, so you are aware. Yeah, just specify because there is something like two Python, two Python and a half team. You have Python module. Yeah. Python application, and then the half thing is Python. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm talking about the Python module team, and uh, because I'm Python programmer, developer, and user, I was, from the very beginning, I subscribed to the mailing list and lurked a bit, a little, without uh, contributing anything, and then at some point there was a problem with the package I was using, I found a bug, I wrote a patch, I sent a bug report, and everything worked pretty well. Then I said, well, good, this means I can do it more often, and I try to be more active. But then all of a sudden you see that in the mailing list there are some quite heated discussion, and their personal problems overlap a little bit with technical discussions. And for me, it was like, okay, now I want to try to package something in Python. I have to choose what helper, Python, you know, DH helper I use. And then you immediately see that the choosing one helper would mean putting you in one side of this battlefield yeah. and uh, without me knowing anyone personally, having no idea what are the practical implications of that. You know, I mean, I thought, well, an helper would be something that would help me making the package. Uh, uh, then I asked why there are two. And nowadays we have three and a half helpers, <laughs> okay? Three, m maybe four battlefields and different, you know, and. So these things scares away a lot of people. For me, it was more like, well, okay, I'm not doing any packaging. I'm just maybe helping people fixing bugs and write proper bug reports and maybe communicate personally with some of the guys. But for the moment, I, I have no time to invest in this kind of stuff, you know, of sorting out the personal problems. And I don't know if Python is just maybe the worst example in Debian right now. I have no idea if other teams have similar dynamics, you know, where... It's one example within too many. Yeah, so, and this, I mean, I have my interpretation why this happens, yeah? I mean, because there are people that consider their packages like their kids, some kind of parental relation with your packages, and so we hear often like, I want to do this, I want to do that, my package is not your package. If I, if I understand Debian policy correctly, every developer has the right to commit to any package, upload any package, right? It's called NMU. So just saying, you know, my package, I want to see this for my package, you can help me, doesn't work. I mean, it scares out people and it puts, you know, this personal layer on top of the technical layer. Uh, in this case, uh, you, are, you were talking first about the social problems sometimes in the, in the things. I understand this care away, but Yes, you also have raised the problem of the false thing. We have something that are one people. 
They are saying, oh, you can join me, you can join me, but the truth is you cannot join them. Yeah, I understand your frustration. So there's only one meaning left. More or less what I want to leave you with the point that Ruth told, uh, Ruth writes, that is more or less what was my talk was about, that if maybe we are not getting so many new people in Debian because we are not trying to get more people into Debian. I mean, we, have, we really need to invest more time in getting, in getting new people. So thank you very much.